Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 11th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got a great new diary today by Didier. Didier is talking about how to analyze one of the more complex Emotet Maldoc samples that we received lately. And thanks also, of course, to our readers that keep us supplied with interesting malware. In this particular case, the first hurdle was that there was in the document a zip file, but it was encrypted. So standard techniques to extract the content of that zip file didn't really work. So the DA shows how to use zip dump in conjunction with OliDump in order to extract this malicious file from the particular document and then the next hurdle was that the visual basic script was heavily obfuscated and Didier did try to use Viper Monkey, but it didn't work out of the box. He had to use the special alternate parameter in order to make it work. Viper Monkey is a pretty interesting tool. There's a lot of malicious Visual Basic scripts out there. Of course, they're all obfuscated and make it difficult to analyze them. So what you really need to do is you need to essentially run the Visual Basic script. That's usually the easiest way to de-obfuscate them. But if you don't want to run it in the actual uh, vert visual basic what you can do is you can use viper monkey which emulates the visual basic parser as any emulation it's not perfect and this particular case the a4 alternative parameter made it work well enough in order to decode this particular macro so interesting diary if you're running into documents like this it looks really easy when didier does it uh, in his little videos and just last week, I talked about how Startcom and Wosign is trying to get back on the good side of uh, Google and Mozilla in order to have their certificate authorities trusted again. They got kicked out of the trusted list after issuing backdated certificates. Well, uh, now Microsoft announced that starting in September, Windows 10 will no longer trust any Wosign or Startcom certificates. This will only affect newly issued certificates, so your existing certificates will continue to work. But essentially what they're going to do is they're going to set a not before date, which means that no certificate will be trusted if it was issued after September 26, 2017. So if you're still using these certificate authorities, you probably should stop using them for your public facing sites. Now, there has been a lot of uh, motion in this space lately with Symantec getting effectively out of the business after being caught issuing bad certificates. Wosign, Startcom, that has been going on for at least a year now. So we'll see where this ends up. But at this point, if you do want in particular a free certificate, pretty much Let's Encrypt is your best option. And over the recent years, you often probably heard about problems with SMS messages and how they aren't necessarily as secure as they could be. Well, uh, things could actually be worse. You could be using a third-party SMS application like SMS Touch. SMS Touch is available in the iOS App Store, and it does provide very cheap international SMS messages. But uh, this comes at a hidden cost in the sense that first, of all, login credentials are sent in the clear. Also, there is no real password. There's just a four digit pin. And so far, it may not really matter that it's being sent in the clear. And also all your text messages are being sent in the clear as a regular HTTP request. Cscaler has a more detailed report on SMS touch, but I doubt it's the only SMS application that is behaving in this way. And Thomas Reed has an interesting blog post about some recent adware that he spotted for the Mac. As very typical for malicious software on the Mac, it arrives as a fake Flash Player. Now, once it installs itself, it's actually not really all that complex. All it does is it changes the browser's homepage. It also adds a browser extension by the name of any search and changes the user's default search engine. Now, 
pretty simple but effective with uh, these settings. The adver is now able to control the user's browser, inject ads and profit. Sadly, the particular sample that Thomas looked at here still has no antivirus recognition according to a virus total. And this particular malware family is also known as Operator Mac. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Remember, I will be teaching classes in a couple of weeks in Virginia Beach, also Baltimore and Vegas. If you're interested in any of the classes, check the bottom of the show notes page. There's a list of upcoming locations. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.